afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. On behalf of the Lotus Group, I'd like to welcome the representatives of the media gathered here in the room and those of the media representatives who are sitting in front of their computers and watching our transmission live. Today we want to present consolidated financial results for Q1 2022, and I have the pleasure to now uh, tell you who is attending the conference. Krzysztof Nowicki, Vice President of Lotus Group for M&A. Łukasz Minut, Chief Financial Officer. Hello. And Przemysław Krzysztofski, Director in for the Investor Relations. My name is Anel Kasprzyk, and I am Head of Communications at Lotus. Now, I'm turning to those journalists following us live. Traditionally, we will accept also your questions that you can send to us at media at Lotus Group PL. During this conference, please send your questions. After we have completed the presentations, we will have a Q&A session where we will address your questions. I also um, direct this message to the media representatives present here. You can ask questions. Feel free to do so. Krzysztof Nowicki will take the floor first, Mr. President. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome at our Financial Results Conference. Just some brief information on some events at Lotus SA that might have impacted the first quarter of 2022. So first of all, a fundamental, extremely important event also in the times in which it happened was the following fact. Lotus SA commenced in Q1, actually um, 16th of April, pursuant to our budget and plan, we finalized a modernization shutdown, half shutdown actually, of the refinery of our um, refinery installations. And this event um, happened at a very special point after Russia invaded Ukraine. And for this reason, the management of the Lotus Group had to take a decision to take this uh, modernization obligation in a very special um, circumstance. And therefore, we are extremely happy to announce that this activity looking at the security uh, of production and availability of installations in a long-term perspective has been duly completed in an uninterrupted fashion in line with the pre presumed budget and on a timely manner. This information is extremely important. Another important fact is the process of merger with PKN Orlen. On this topic, let me tell you that we are now continuing the works related to the preparation of the European Commission's decision. Also, we are now at the stage of preparation along the current legal framework of integration processes. And importantly, from the social, corporate social perspective, we are in the process of discussing with the social party the terms and conditions of the creation of this multi-energy group that is going to be created. Right now, we have initialed certain arrangements that bring us closer to a joint vision of that multi-energy holding that is to be created. Thus, Lotus Group is now carrying out this process in a peaceful manner. <coughs> An important element for you to so that you have full information is that Lotus SR Group following that shutdown is now carrying out 
purchasing of commodities, raw materials that are necessary to conduct its activity in an uninterrupted way along the, in line with the principles that we have adopted before, we are communicated to a reduced extent certain directions and volume rates. Please be informed that any purchasing is based on the existing long-term contracts. Spot purchasing regards and is properly communicated. The point of spot purchasing is only aimed at diversifying our procurement of raw materials. Now, this declaration refers to crude oil, obviously, starting from mid-2021, Grupa Lotos SA has been optimizing its utilization of other energy carriers to cover the needs of production, I mean by that gas. As of now, we have managed to implement activities as a result of which over 50% is that we can reduce the consumption of natural gas for the production purposes vis-a-vis -vis the consumption that we had in Q1 2021. Should you have any questions on this one, I will be here. And the next point that is detailed elements present in the report for Q1 2022 will be presented by uh, Lukasz Minut, Chief Financial Officer. The floor is yours, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to bring you through the next slide on which you can see the summary of Q1 2021. Uh, you can see here four indicators, two financial, two business-related ones. But before I go to EBITDA and LIFO, just a brief comment on the current situation. After the year 2020 that was powerfully hit by the pandemic, the year 2021 was a year during which markets recovered in a solid fashion. And that is presented on the upper chart. Q4 2021 compared to Q1 2021 uh, showed that the situation indeed became more and more stable, especially on the fuel market. Q1 2022 shows a continuing tendency. Of course, bear in mind that at the end of February, Russia attacked Ukraine and this situation affected the fuel market, making it even more tense. Uh, on the left-hand side on the chart, you can also see uh, those results broken down by our segments. You can see very robust contribution uh, from 1,300,000 EBITDA LIFO. 540 of that was the contribution made by the refining and marketing sector, even though the production was a little bit smaller than planned. Now, when it comes to crude oil, throughput. The amount is very similar as in corresponding period in 2021. This rate is lower than in Q4 of the previous year, and this is related to the fact mentioned by my predecessor, which was the shutdown uh, that uh, took place in Q4 2021 and Q1 uh, 2022. Starting from March this year to mid-April, these works have been completed. That means the refinery is operated fully again. Now, net debt to LIFO EBITDA, this is a strategic indicator. It is very solid. 0.42 depicts a very stable position of the whole group. You can compare it to our strategic target, which is 1.5. There is still some room 
for improvement here. Now, daily hydrocarbons extraction. I'm coming to mention that when I go down to dis go further to discuss the refining and marketing, here we have a minus 9%. This is the decrease in production, and that's the difference between Q4 2021 and Q1 2022. And this precisely is due to limited production in uncertain deposits. And now I'm passing uh, over the floor to um, my colleague. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. So my turn. Um, I'm going to tell you more about um, the market fundamentals. We have uh, very stable operating assets for the refinery segment and oil and gas segment. This macroeconomic environment, in fact, is something that drives mostly the financial results that uh, our group has achieved. It has uh, been continued in the recent four quarters. We keep uh, having a close eye at the quotations of uh, natural gas. Uh, there are many disturbances in terms of supply because the demand is still the same. That causes a very high volatility in our macroeconomic environment. On that slide, you can see the continuation of a slide that we presented six months ago, actually, three months before now. And ironically, the level of uh, natural gas quotations in the first months of that year against this background seems to be low. But $170 for BOE is the rate that you can see right now. It is still very high. So keep in mind the fact that in 2020, it was about $9 per BOE. So in these circumstances, also depicted by my predecessors, plus the shutdown of the refinery, it has been extremely dramatic to keep optimizing the utilization of natural gas and finding other methods to minimize the consumption of gas and to replace that carrier with other commodities, uh, which could be semi uh, products at uh, Lotus as a group. You can see here that at peak moments after the outbreak of war in Ukraine, uh, natural gas prices went up to $350 per, per BOE. However, recently they stabilized a bit and at times went down below $100 per BOE. Now, moving on to how the macroeconomic environment keeps driving our business. That refers to all of our segments, refinery, oil and gas, uh, how they correspond to our strategic assumptions. So Q1 2022 marked um, the breaking down of that period to two moments. The first part was prior to the Russia's attack on Ukraine. And then the macroeconomic um, conditions after the attack. The volatility that we have been observing after 24th February is still with us, and it keeps determining the volatility of the macroeconomic conditions in which we operate, both in operating and trade perspective. Now, if you think about Brent DTD rates, the quotations were over $100 per barrel in Q1 2022. We assumed strategically it would be from about 70. So looking at the quotations of gas, the level is quite similar to the one we had in Q4 2021. This is the average for the whole quarter. The recent listings of um, gas, like I said, could go beyond $350 per barrel. So that's why the average corresponding is uh, over 170 Now let's move on to the right-hand side of this slide. Uh, let's talk for a moment about the refinery segment. Now, product crux spreads regarding gasoline. We saw that they were minus 10% vis-a-vis uh, -vis our assumptions. 
And on further charts, you will see that in this case, this deviation was not as high as we observed in the quarter three and four last year. So it was not as powerful as the volumes regarding the mm, fuel oil, heavy fuel oil cracks. Now, Q1 2022 showed some rates that we hadn't seen for a long time. That is, they were higher than our assumptions. Uh, for example, if you take diesel, which accounts for the majority of the production of the refinery in Gdańsk, on this crack, you can observe about $170 per ton. That's the rate that actually went much beyond our strategic assumptions, and especially those that we observed in 2021. Importantly, the level is still the same in Q2 2022 on a very good level, uh, $172. So we uh, have been affected, this has been affected for the first two months when the uh, cracks uh, were about $99 per ton. So right now they are at a very satisfactory level for the refinery in Gdańsk. So moving on to uh, other fundamentals, market fundamentals, the influence of the war in Ukraine definitely uh, hit the foreign exchange rates. And uh, I think all of us can uh, feel the result. However, the volatility of the macroeconomic um, circumstances, that this is not as powerful. Of course, the position of PLN rate also translates into better results of our company because we they are denominated in PLN. Now, GDP amounted to about 7% in Q1 2022, which is reflected by the growth in consumption quarter to quarter. This regards both both diesel and gasoline consumption. So if you analyze the macroeconomic environment and consumption of our group, you could say that Q1 was very favorable so that we could generate good results in both segments. So summing up the macroeconomic circumstances and analyzing the tendencies occurring, on the market, both in terms of crude oil and natural gas, I think we all see what is happening. The quotations of natural gas are at a very stable level, quarter to quarter. We were expecting great volatility in terms of natural gas quotations. However, it has been disrupted by the um, invasion of Russia, uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia. However, these disruptions are not uh, as significant as in terms of diesel. We also need to stress that the discrepancy between cracks on middle distillates and on heavy products, I mean heavy fuel oil, is also significantly impacting the profitability of our EFRA project, which contribute in the production of our refinery. So I would sum it up in this way. Now I'll pass the voice to the director Krzyzewski. Thank you very much. <coughs> Let's start with exploration and production segment. And then we will move on to refining and marketing segment. So the increases, increase in quotations of the crude oil and natural gas translated into, into result, better results in terms of exploration and production result. The cleaner beta result for first quarter reached the level of 540 million zlotys, even though uh, the production was lower. In terms of production of hydrocarbons at the level of 16.9, 
thousand of BOE. This dropped by nine percent year over year. Unfortunately, Sleipner, Udgar, Fields contributed to this, and also we have to report EMA Fields, which is now in the stabilization time and. A number of additional tasks have been carried out in EMA field. So we do hope that the operator will be ready in the nearest future to meet our expectations and reach the expected level of production. In terms of production of hydrocarbons for the first quarter, it was lower by 5% quarter to quarter. Let's move on to our producing assets. On the left hand side, you can see Polish fields B8 and B3 on the Baltic Sea. Production on B8 to reach the level of 3.4 barrels a day, thousand of barrels a day. This is more or less the same level that we had last year. This field is quite fresh, quite new in our exploitation works, but it has great potential up to 5,000 uh, barrels a day. B3 is an older field. We are producing 2,000 barrels a day. And the production is more or less the same as last year. And even though we are having some reconstruction works being carried out on B3, it is possible to continue production at a very stable level. And now let's move on to Norwegian field, Sleipner field. This is uh, the field that I've already mentioned. We have noticed the limitation of production in March. There was um, a breakdown, a failure to the compressor. And now the operator of this field will have to carry out certain activities and tasks in order to improve production on this field. However, operator is telling us that at the moment, probably this field will be producing 30% less than it was planned. Udgard field, so we are producing 1,600 barrels a day. And EMA field, I've al already mentioned too. Currently, we are producing 1,800 barrels a day. However, we are still in the commissioning phase, and we expect to reach the level of 5,000 barrels per day for five years. In terms of new projects, I think it's worth mentioning a lot is happening, especially in uh, in the Norwegian continental shelf in Lotus Group. NOACA project, our share amounts to 12.3%. Frisk crude oil will be explored in 2027. Another project, Trina, we are also contributing in 12% in this project, and we are expecting first production in 2025. And on Baltic Sea, we also have another project, and currently at the phase of analysis, it is a B4 gas field, and it might contribute to diversification of our demand for gas, especially in so changing and unprecedented situation, economical situation. Now we are moving on to overall production figures. So average daily production is more or less the same uh, to the previous year. So even though we have certain aspects on our fields, we are able to keep a very stable level in Q1 2022. According to uh, country, if we talk about production, we have distribution. We know that the Norwegian fields are co contributing a lot, over one million, or almost one million of barrels in Norway and the Norwegian continental shelf, and rather marginal exploration in terms of uh, Lithuania. In terms of F um, product mix structure, this is more or less 50-50%. Um, uh, 
So we have 48% of gas and 52% of oil. And now we are moving on to uh, total recoverable reserves. I have already mentioned that reserves from 69 million dropped to 67 million. However, this drop that you can see split into countries also, it just results from a very natural depletion of these fields when we talk about production of oil and gas. And now summary of quarterly operating results of the segment EBIT. In first quarter, 444 increased by depreciation in the amount of 96 accounts for 540 million zlotys for the first quarter of 2022. A significant difference in comparison to corresponding period in 2021 and similar results to the results we achieved in fourth quarter of 2021. And at the bottom of the slide, you can see that there were no one-off events in 2022. And therefore, we didn't have any write-offs from uh, durable impairment of these fields. And now let's discuss refining and marketing segment. Well, within this segment, after the pandemic of COVID-19, we have reported increase in demand. And we can see that this segment is recovering quickly after the pandemic. And we have slight supply and we have limited supply and reserves in, in Europe resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic. We noticed increase of prices that we have also observed in the first quarter of 2022. And starting from the end of February, the situation is unstable. The situation related to the invasion in Ukraine and the current situation is difficult to foresee and predict. So the beginning, the first quarter of 2022, the cleaner bit LIFO result at the level of 755.9 million compared to the previous to the previous period in 2021, great increase. And even though we had a temporary maintenance shutdown, we managed to reach this high result. Clean a bit uh, of the retail segment at the level of 42.8 million slotters in comparison to uh, previous year, 28.8 million slotters. High utilization of the refinery also achieved despite the maintenance shutdown. I have to say that in a similar period last year um, in Europe, the average utilization of refineries reached the level of 80% and we reached the level of 90%. So even though the situation is uh, volatile and um, the, the, the circumstances changed a lot and even though we were facing war in Ukraine, our situation is quite stable and we are working hard to optimize our production and to be able to benefit from this high utilization of the refining capacity. So we processed almost 2 million tons of crude oil and um, the total finished products reached the amount of 2.5 million tons. We tried to protect also the market when we had shutdowns and we were importing um, certain products from Middle East. For instance, 200,000 tons of products were imported from Middle East. And we also, uh, the structure of products included 58% of diesel oil and 13% of motor gas line. In terms of average model refining margin, it reached the level of 17.2 
dollars per barrel. Well, it's resulted from differential, and even though we are using in the formula the price of the natural gas, I will show you in detail these figures in a minute. However, if we talk about significant reduction of gas um, consumption for refining processes, this is part of optimization. So we are trying to achieve as much as possible. I mean, we are also trying to uh, produce semi-products, for instance, when the prices of gas are higher than expected. So we can change the direction and our plans and supplies. In terms of diversification of sources of crude oil supplies, well, in connection with the outbreak of war in Ukraine, we are, tr we are benefiting from our position in the Baltic Sea, I mean Naftoport also, and I would like to stress flexibility of throughput of crude oil. Right now we have over 270 types of crude oil that we can process successfully in our refinery. And the second part of the shutdown, I can only add that this will be a great challenge for our operational workers because it is an extraordinary challenge in terms of logistics. However, we will uh, tell you the details in a minute. Now, let's move on to the summary of our quarterly results for this segment. EBITDA for Q1 2021 was about 1.6 billion. Slaughter LIFO result was negative minus 847. One of events, uh, 49 million only. That is due to FX differences. So the cleaned LIFO EBITDA 776 million with a contribution 43 million of the retail segment vis a vis Q1 2021. So this marks a growth of over 70%, actually. Let's move on to the next slide. Right. This is the modal refining margin that I already mentioned before, 17.2. This is the average rate. And you've heard comments also at the previous conference. That is mm, the hypothetical profitability of the refinery in certain macroeconomic conditions. Actually, it doesn't reflect the current margin generated by Lotus Asphalt, precisely because of the season volatility and, second of all, because of the optimization effects that include changing gas, natural gas, and uh, replacing natural gas with other media. In such a case, the calculation looks different. In, importantly, in quarter one, Lotus Group didn't fully take advantage of the situation of that margin because precisely like mentioned before, we had the overhaul shutdown. And therefore, the refinery did not operate. It was shut off. That's it actually from me. And I'm passing the floor over to my colleague. Ladies and gentlemen, I will have the pleasure to sum up the quarterly financial results for Q1 2022. Let's start with operating activity, which apparently is a very high level, 1.9 billion zloty, but in fact, this is very much influenced by the overestimation of our storage situation. Looking at dynamic growth in the price of oil, it should be actually uh, adjusted by minus 840 because, like I said, we overestimate the condition of our storage. Plus, we had the one-off events that were only very limited, only related to eliminating the FX differences in operating activity, so that's minus 49. The point of this operation is to 
have the cleaned LIFO EBITDA that is communicated to you, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of every quarter. It is normally also adjusted by impairment. In this case, depreciation is 327. So uh, all in all, the clean EBITDA LIFO for Q1 2022 amounts to 1.3 billion slotty. Now, in terms of conversion of that result, operating cash flow versus CAPEX, uh, you can see here the current level that is presented on the slide. We ended Q1 with negative cash flows on operating activity. But here, please pay attention to the certain cyclical nature of cash flows. Q1 2021 was also marked by shutdown. First quarter 2022, again, we had an overhaul shutdown. Obviously, we took due care in order to keep up proper operating activity despite the shutdowns. But still, let's remember that an overhaul shutdown is also a challenge for financial services because we need to organize operating capital in order to supply the national market with products frequently imported, like Dr. Kosicki mentions. Um, plus, the central part of the shutdown uh, took place precisely at the closing of Q1, so we had to uh, pay proper attention to stocks. Also, war in Ukraine, of course, keeps influencing the situation. There are certain risks regarding not only the availability of um, raw materials, but also of some other commodities, which are then converted in the Gdańsk refinery into finished goods, which then are sold in Poland. Again, aggressive management of operating capital in such a tense macroeconomic and geopolitical situation would not be advisable in that period. And for this reason, we had to manage that capital in a proper way. This led to some one-off transactions. As a result, we came up with a negative cash flow in Q1 2022. I'm going to move on to CAPEX now. It's over 300 million slotties in Q1 2022. One third accounts for development projects in Norway and they are broken down by uh, mm, those individual projects, the Trima, Makap, and IMA. The remaining components of that amount, first of all, it's the preparation for the shutdown, and we had to um, make some uh, expenditures prior to that overhaul shutdown. So uh, CAPEX is about 20% higher than in the corresponding period, which is Q1 2021. In such circumstances, if you try to sum up our liquidity situation, the debt indicators of our group present themselves as follows. I mentioned already that we are involved in the level of storage, so we used part of our liquidity surplus that we generated before. As a result, we could take on additional debt. We have generated additional net debt at the level of about 900 million Polish slaughter in Q1 2022 which doesn't change the fact that if you look at the main indicators where we monitor the level of indebtedness of LOTOS group or uh, financial leverage or um, a net debt versus EBITDA, uh, EBITDA LIFO, we are still below the threshold limits that we had adopted um, in our group as safe. So we are ending quarter one with a gearing ratio of uh, with of about 10 percent net debt versus EBITDA LIFO, one of the key indicators mentioned by Director Krzyzewski, amounts to 0 0.3. I think that slide perfectly summarizes that presentation part, and I will mm, hand over the floor to Director Kastrzyk. Uh, thank you very much, Director. So now let's move on swiftly to our Q&A session, ladies and gentlemen. So the floor is yours now.
Good afternoon, Jacek Germanowski, reporter Hemiczny, journal. I have two questions. The first one, whether cooperation uh, Audi Aramco is still continued or are we pending, uh, or is this decision uh, pending of the European Commission still? And what do shareholders make of it? Do they feel responsible so that we can improve deliveries of crude oil to Poland? And second question, with uh, the ceased deliveries of Russian gas to Poland, maybe we should consider uh, increasing the extraction potential of Poland. I mean, today war is in Ukraine. Maybe next day it will come to us. Can we safely import commodities, for example, from Australia? Maybe we should search for new deposits in Poland, like um, Um, now, over to you, sir. Right, let me refer to Saudi Aramco. Uh, first of all, let me remind you that right now we are in the process of the merger with PK and Orlan. And the, the journalist before mentioned shale gas. So uh, we uh, will enter into a cooperation agreement with Saudi Aramco. Right now we are evaluating uh, that suggested draft. Uh, and after we do that, we can move on to other stages of the merger process. Let me remind you that the agreement with Saudi Aramco concluded on 12th of January 2022. In fact, it was a whole package of agreements, not a single one. The first one was about the disposition of 30% of the share in the Gdańsk refinery, but there were also three additional agreements. The first one related to the cooperation on R&D. The second, uh, fundamental in order to answer your question, this was the agreement on the delivery of uh, crude oil to the multi-energy holding that will be constituted after the merger of LOTOS with EPECA and Orlan. In other words, these topics have been properly addressed much earlier, not as a reaction to the current military conflict in Ukraine. And the same applies to, of course, the those three additional agreements that we concluded with Saudi Aramco uh, are also about finding a proper partner. I mean, remember that this is between PK and Orlen and Saudi Aramco. Lotus Group, in this regard, is informed about concluding the agreement, but it is not a party to it. Now, referring to the um, prospecting and uh, extracting shale gas in Poland, well, just like in the process of the merger, we, uh, in this case, uh, it's kind of similar. I mean, we are not talking here about a different type of event. It's about systematic, consistent work that has been, has been delivered by our group for many years now. We keep informing you about our acquisitions uh, in terms of fields, crude oil fields, or potential um, for the extraction of gas. We keep developing these capacities, both in Poland, but also in other countries that could potentially deliver this raw material to Poland. Thank you very much. Any other questions? In that case, thank you. And let's uh, continue uh, on an informal manner now. Uh, feel free, should you have any additional questions, to send a question to media at grupalotos.pl and we are going to address all of the questions that you sent to this email address. Thank you for this conference. Krzysztof Nowicki, Vice President of the Board for Mergers and Acquisitions. Łukasz Mino, Chief Financial Officer. Przemysław Krzysztof, Director of Investor Relations. 
and Adam Kasprzyk, Head of Communication Department. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention.